and then we'll follow, we need to follow a couple of links from today's class. So controlling Chrome. And I'm gonna follow this link on notes to install Selenium. So Selenium is, it's like an open source project that uh, uses, that, that allows you to kind of remote control browsers. And it will do almost any browser you've heard of. So you can control Chrome, you can control Edge, you can control Internet Explorer, you can control Safari, you can control, I don't know what else, um, Firefox and others. Uh, and so it is, it is used just for this purpose. And so we've got, we've got to install a couple of different things to make this work. So one is we need to install Selenium. And um, then we also need to be able to, to install this thing called Selenium Basic, which is a wrapper around Selenium that allows us to automate um, Selenium from inside of VBA. But Selenium is like the, it's like the accepted way to like remote control browsers. And so if you're doing stuff in Python, and you're going to be remote controlling a browser, you're probably using Selenium for that as well. So um, it's available in lots of different languages. So um, here we go, if I can remember how to do this. So step one, we're going to install Selenium Basic. I'm going to follow this link to GitHub. And then we're going to download uh, this project. So Selenium Basic, like this current version. Now, if I understood right, I'll just go ahead and download this. Now, what is GitHub? GitHub is like the popular code sharing platform on the internet. I don't know who started it, but a number of years ago, micro, a number of years ago Microsoft bought it. So Microsoft owns GitHub uh, and it's just a place where you can share code. In fact, anytime you uh, download one of the files from our class like website or from our blog, so when I post like the stuff we've done in class, I post that stuff to GitHub. That's where you're downloading that stuff uh, when we do that. So uh, GitHub does not do anything to try to make sure that uh, the code that's uploaded there is not malicious, but if I can remember how to hit page down. Um, so you shouldn't just download anything from GitHub and assume that it's, that it's okay, but um, this Selenium Basic will be just fine. So it looks like we've got that just about downloaded, another half minute or so, and we'll be able to start that installation process. Questions? So by controlling Chrome with VBA, it's gonna give us the ability to log in to like password protected websites and do things that that are kind of beyond the capabilities of the web query wizard. There are two main restrictions that the web query wizard has. Number one is that you've got to be able, the page that you want to go to pretty much has to be a page that you can just go to directly without being logged in. So if you need to log in to do it, or if you need to like to get to the page you're after, you need to put information like into a form and hit submit, that's beyond what the web query wizard is going to do. Uh, the second thing the Web Query Wizard can't do is that it only gives you ability to access data that is displayed on the page. And many times the data that you're interested in isn't, on, isn't shown on the page. It's only available inside the HTML of the page. For instance, if you're looking to follow a link, you need to get what the URL of the link is. With a Web Query Wizard, you can see the text that's in the link, but you can't pick up the URL off of that link. And of course, you could do that if you had access to the code. And so if you need to get access to the underlying HTML of a page, or if you need to log into the website, then this is gonna be the approach that we're gonna to take to be able to get access. Okay, so it looks like I've got that uh, downloaded. I'm just gonna go ahead and run that uh, and install. So welcome, I'm gonna hit next. And I don't know what that says, but I'm gonna to agree to it. Next, select components. I'm just gonna assume that this is all that we need next. Well, I guess we could, could back that off and say we're only interested in the driver for Chrome, but I'm gonna go ahead and just install all this and install. Now we'll go through and step one, okay. Is, that, is there anyone that's trying to follow along with this that, that says that didn't work for me? Okay, so it looks like so far, so good.
Okay, so that was step one, install Selenium Basic. So we've got that, downloading the current release. Ah, we we're supposed to pay it, we're supposed to pay attention to where that installed, but it's going to be at this same, um, should be at the same location. So I'm gonna check and make sure that, that is where it is here. So let me go ahead and open up file explorer, come here to C colon backslash users. And I think Olive is the user here. And then app data local. And that app data may not, may be hidden. So let me just go ahead and type it in appdata slash local. And then Selenium Basic. Okay, so it looks like that is that is where it is just fine. So because app data is like a hidden directory, I don't think you can click on it without doing something else to show hidden folders. But if you'll just, if you um, go ahead and type in like C colon backslash users, you should be able to find your username. And then from there, if you type the rest of that URL in, you should be in good shape or the rest of that path, which is shown here in the end. That was a little bit confusing. Is there anyone who's not hasn't followed that or needs help getting to this folder because we're going to need to put some stuff into this folder. Okay. So step two is to download the Chrome web driver. So here's the idea is that Chrome, um, that for Selenium Basic, you have to have a driver that's configured for the current version of the browser that you're working with. And so whichever browser we're trying to automate, we've got to get the current version of the driver for that. So we're going to follow this link. I think the page looks a little different than it does from the time that I made this, um, this image. But we're going to be looking for the latest stable release. So here I am at this Chrome driver page. All available are here. And the latest stable release is showing up right here. So that, I'm going to want to follow this link, the latest Chrome driver. And then this has the driver for different operating systems. And we're going to want the only one that deals with Windows. It's this Chrome driver win32.zip. I'm going to download that file. And I will open that up. So this is actually a .zip file. It's a compressed file. But what I need to do is I got to get this Chrome driver file out of this compressed archive. And I've got to put it right here. So I should be able to see here's a Chrome driver right here. So this is that install folder that we just found where Selenium Basic was installed. And we've got to replace this old version of the Chrome driver with this current version of the Chrome driver. So I'm just going to drag that right over and drop it not on top of any one of these files, but I'm gonna just kind of drop it over here in the white space on this folder. Do I wanna replace that file? I do wanna replace that file. So that should give me the most current version of the driver. So I've downloaded Selenium Basic. I've got the current driver. Uh, I'm making really good progress here. So let me go back here. We've got the current driver, we've got 32. Replace Selenium Basics Chrome driver with that one. Uh, so that should be here. Leave this window open. Yeah. Okay. So now here in this folder where I put that Chrome driver, there's a subfolder here called scripts. And in scripts, there is a start Chrome script. So this is going to allow us to just run and make sure that everything is configured correctly at this time. So this is going to run a very small VBS script. So VBS is, stands for, we're, we're using VBA in Excel, 
it has a cousin called VBS, which is kind of same syntax, but isn't for running inside of any other application. So you don't need Excel or Word or PowerPoint to run it. You can just run it at the operating system. And so that's what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna double click that. And if we get an error here, we'll work through the error. And what this is saying is that this needs the uh, .NET Framework 3.5. So I'm just going to say, okay, here, I'm going to download and install this feature. My guess is that most of you did not get this error. Um, so if you didn't get this error, you're probably okay. What I would have expected that to do. So how many of you, when you double click that, that start Chrome script, it actually opened up a copy of Chrome on your machine. Did that work for anyone? Okay, so at least have one there in the back. Just, if you're, just show me if you're trying to follow along with me right now in class so I can see who's trying to follow along. Okay, so for those of you, there's quite a few of you that are following along. When you ran that, did it not have a, did it not open up Chrome? You're getting this. So how many of you are getting this? Still quite a few. Okay, well, let's go through and install this one as well. Download and install this feature. Ah, um, so downloading required files. So the comment is it may take a minute for us to get here. So we'll just let it go. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So when you, so if you got to replace the Chrome driver, that's right. We're on the next part here. So step four, open that scripts folder and then double click on what was it, open, open Chrome, start Chrome. And yeah, if you, if you have that version of the .NET library, it'll just open up Chrome. Did it open up Chrome for you? And it's, so you're going through this download process as well. Okay, while that's downloading, let's go ahead and kind of start to get Excel uh, set up. We can do a little bit of work in our, getting our Excel workbook ready for this. Let's go ahead and open up Excel and uh, we'll move on to step five, even though we still have step four here pending. So step five, we're going to open up a blank workbook. And actually, instead of opening a blank workbook, let me go ahead and download the workbook that we're going to be working on today. So to download, we've got Controlling Chrome, and we've got this trucklist.xlsx file. So let me go ahead and get that one downloaded, and we'll open it up. Uh, be careful, it's from the internet. Will it enable editing? It's like it will. And let me go ahead and this is an XLSX file, so there's no VBA code in it. So let me go ahead and save it as an XLSM. See with this PC, I'm gonna put this in download, it should be just fine. I'll make it an XLSM. And I'm gonna rename it here, underscore fall 22. Okay, now there's also here on the blog, there's this parser.cls file. So CLS, I don't know, we've, we haven't imported a CLS file before. In VBA, we've been using VBA like an object-based language, meaning we manipulate objects all the time. So we, we, we access different objects, they have properties and methods. A CLS file is an exported class. In other words, we can create our own kinds of new objects in VBA. And so this parser class is an object that I wrote to help with parsing the HTML of, of uh, websites. And so I'm just going to go ahead and import this. So I'm going to download this.cls file. It's just a text version of that class. 
and then I'm going to import that. So I'll come back to Excel. I will open up my code. And then I will do a file, import file, and I will find that CLS, that uh, parser.cls file. Downloads, parser.cls. And that has now given me this class modules area here with this parser file. So this is just VBA code that is has some methods, some properties and methods that we will use in it for helping us to parse these text files. And so we'll see how to use this here um, shortly. Well, let's go ahead and insert a regular module uh, where we'll do our work. So I'll make a sub procedure here. I'm going to chain and configure this so you can see a little bit better on the screen. So tools, options, editor, and see if I can find Microsoft Sans Serif Western. like step four is still coming along. Okay, so I've, I've opened the truck list Excel workbook. I've imported the parser file and I have uh, created a new module. Ooh, question. So I guess that I'm aware of let me come and see if I can help track that down for you. So, oh, I made this other computer the host. So let me come here and see if I can pause the recording. Okay. So. Let's see how we're doing on step four. Looks like we're getting close. All right, so let me just introduce you to this parser class here. So let me create a new sub procedure. I'm going to call this get data. We'll kind of use this to solve the problem that we're going to solve uh, in class today. But let me declare. Uh, a variable, I'll just call it P, as a new parser. So that is going to, it will create a new object made from this parser class. So it will have the properties and methods that are defined over here in this parser class. And I will refer to it by the name P. The idea behind this is I'm going to put into the text of this parser, I'm going to put in like the full text of an HTML file. And then I will use the parser to be able to kind of search through it and be able to extract different parts out of it. So it has then a text property. I'm just going to put some text in. We can use any text here. So I'll just plug some text into here. So I will say p dot text equals, and then I'll just put in some text here. Now, the idea behind this parser is that it's kind of set up like Notepad. So Notepad is just a text editor. And like when you search in Notepad, it will search from wherever the current position of your cursor is forward. And so I'm going to start off by setting that position of where I'm looking from is just a property. So p.position equals 1. So I'm going to tell it to start looking at the beginning of the file. And what I want to do is I want to say, you know what, I want to move the position of this to where it finds the word seer. And so I will say p dot move to. And then you know, what I'm looking for, this is going to be case sensitive. So I'm looking to seer to that point. Let me just go ahead and run the code to this point and I'll stop it.
Okay, so I should be able to come to my immediate window and say, just show me the text, p.text. You can see that that text is there in the parser. And even though I've set position to one, if I ask what the position is, it's gonna tell me that it has moved that position property to 15 because that's where it found it. So one, there's the first character, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So this, it's moved the position to the first character after what I told it to search for. And so from here, I'm gonna tell it just to extract out everything from that position up until the word time. So if I come here and say, I want you to use the function get text, I'm gonna say, get all the text from wherever the current position is up until it finds this word time. So the current position is here. And so that should bring back the string space of space old in space. It should bring back this string. So it's brought that string back. So using the get text, I can kind of pull something off of the text of the parser. And by the way, that also now has updated the position to just after that thing that I pulled out. So if I ask for the position again, we'll see that it's advanced now another few characters. So being able to move to a position and then select text back from that based on where it finds the next set of text is gonna be really helpful to us in parsing HTML files. Ah, okay, it looks like that was successfully installed. Um, you might need to restart apps to re that require this feature. Very good. Okay, I'm guessing that there's some of you that are still waiting for that to install, yes? So show me your hand if you're still waiting for that to install. Okay, I guess we're ready to move on. I'm not entirely sure that we need to close Excel to be able to get this to work, but let's go ahead and just do that anyway. So I'm gonna save what I have so far, close Excel and reopen it. And open. Okay. All the prompts to update it. So we've just finished this and we're ready to move on to step five. Oops. So step five is gonna to be to add a reference to the Selenium type library. Okay, so we've got our code here. And what step five says is to come here to tools, choose references, and we need to find the Selenium type library. Selenium type library. And that should show up if our installation process has gone through okay. Make sure that clicking it to turn it blue is not enough. You have to make sure that you click the little check mark to get it checked there. And then we'll say okay. So now we've added the reference to that, to the objects that we've installed. And so we should be able to now refer to those uh, from our code. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this Google search example because now we should be able to run this. So here's get data. Let me come here and paste in that Google search one. 
So WebDriver is what was it's one of the things that we imported with the Selenium with Selenium Basic. We were declaring a variable of that type called bot, and then we're telling it that we want to we want to start the Chrome browser. So we're going to call bot.start, tell it to open Chrome. That should open up Chrome. We're going to tell it then to go to this particular URL. And I'm going to put a stop right here. And we'll run it to that point. OK, so now we can see that it has opened up Chrome. You get this little banner up here. Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. That's fine. I can leave that open or I can close it. I think I can close it. Maybe I can't close it. Okay, so no thanks. Oh, this way I couldn't close it. Okay, so now this next thing I'm going to do is I am going to send keys to this browser. But I'm going to find an element on the page, and I'm going to find that element by its name. So there must be an element on this page that has a name of as underscore q. Find these words. So I think this is what I'm looking for. I'm going to right click this and choose inspect. And sometimes when you first open up that inspector, it doesn't actually take you to where you've asked to go. So I'm going to, it's, it's highlighting the whole body of the document here. So let me just try it again. I'll right click that and choose inspect again. And now that's taking me, it's taken me down here to this particular element. So here's the tag. This is the HTML tag that renders that little square here, this text box here. And so we can see that's called an input element. And it has a class which says how it's going to be styled, some other information here about its ID and how it's going to be focused. But you'll notice it has a name here called ASQ, AS underscore Q. And so when I come back here to my code, I'm saying, listen, you've got you know, this bot, which is connected onto Chrome. We've navigated to this page. And now we're saying we want to find an element on this page that has this name. And we're going to send keys to it. We're going to send Colonial Heritage Festival there. So let me go ahead and... Let's see, where's F8 on this keyboard? I'm getting ready to run that, but I want to split my screen so we can see it happen. Let me do now F8 again. And I'm going to undock the inspector here. Or maybe I'll just leave it full size. There we go. Okay, so now when I run this one, this line, we should see it actually plug that into Chrome here. So function F8. So now our VBA code has executed that. We are now going to find an element by class. So, and it's this JFK button, JFK. I don't think that has anything to do with the assassinated president. I don't know what the JFK stands for. But I'm going to come down here to advanced search. And just so we can kind of inspect this, I'm going to right click and inspect. And we'll see that this has a class of JFK button. And so it, it, this tag does not have a name. If it had a name, I would prefer to use the name to refer to it by. Um, so this is going to find the first element, the first HTML, HTML element that has that class. Fortunately, that's the one that we're after. Now, instead of sending keys to it, we're going to click on that. So when I execute this one, we should see it actually do this. It should do this search there. So function F8. And then we see then that that has actually you know, done that search. It's navigated to that place. We can see the information that's coming about the Colonial Heritage Festival. Okay, so 
it takes a little bit of effort to get that Selenium installed. But now that it's installed here, it's going to be pretty straightforward for me to be able to open up a copy of Chrome and find elements on the page and have that, you know, and, and control that particular item. Questions here? Yes. Let me come and take a look at it. You just pause the recording, we'll take a look. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, stop this code here. Okay, so let's take a look then at the full example that we're trying to do here. I'm gonna come back and uh, to our link for today, and we should have, hmm, seems like I should have had one more link here. Let me go pull it off of last semester. Maybe it's in the workbook itself. So I thought I had the link there, but I don't see it. So let me look here. Ah, here we go. Okay, so here's the idea, is that I've got this list of trucking companies. Um, I've got this kind of information about them, and I need to be able to pull in their phone number and their fax number if they have it. Who still has a fax machine? I don't know. Apparently some trucking companies do. And so I'm gonna be interested in going after these two pieces of information. Now, uh, if you are a commercial, uh, like a common carrier uh, in the United States, you need to be registered with the federal government, like the Department of Transportation Safety or something. And so all of this information is like publicly available information off of this particular site. So I'm just gonna copy this link here and I'm gonna open that up like just in Chrome by itself. So I'm not gonna open this in the Chrome that my browser opened because each time my code ends, it will dump off that browser and I'll have to start again. So just in a regular version of Chrome, I'm gonna plug that URL in. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to come down here and search by this Department of Transportation number. And fortunately, that's some of the data that I have right here, the US dot number. So here's the Duke brothers. I'm going to copy that. And this is the process that we're going to try to automate. We'll paste that in here and hit search. And then it's brought up a list of the ones that it finds as a match, I'm gonna to wanna to find this link, follow that link, and then here's where we have the information. So we've got a phone number and a fax number here. So ultimately that's what I'm going after. So you can see that it's gonna take us a couple of different steps to get there. We've gotta put it into the search page, actually click on that search button. We then have to find the right company that's here listed in the results. Click that link and then come down here and actually pull the data off of the page. So that's where we're headed. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got this URL is going to be the first place I'm going to send that browser that I'm controlling. All right, so I'm going to change, maybe I'll just go ahead and copy this Google search to be a trucking search. We'll leave that other example there since it's a nice working example. And this will be the same, all this is the same until I get to the first get here. And here I'm gonna replace this with the URL that I wanna open. I 
And let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and run it up to that point, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. So now what I'm going to want to do is plug in to this item right here. Well, I've got to find out how am I going to identify this? So I'm going to go ahead and inspect it. I'm going to right click and inspect. And it looks like it brought up again, just to the whole body. I'm going to undock this. So I'm going to click on this little more options here and tell it to be a separate window. Zoom in a bit on this. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to inspect that again. Okay, so that looks like it found it here. So input is type text, the width is this, ah, and it has a name, DOT. So if it has a name or an ID, that's going to be a preferred way to be able to find these items. So I should be able to find that by name in my code. So it's called DOT. And let me do this. I'm going to um, kind of do this in two steps so that if it fails, we'll be able to see that it fails and why it fails. So let me dim something called ELEM, E-L-E-M, be short for element as uh, a web element. So I'm going to dim elem as web element. And so instead of just finding it and sending the send keys at once, let me just see if I can find it and connect it onto my elem variable. So I'm just going to say set elem equal to and I'll tell it to go find that web element. Then if that works, we'll just send the keys to Alum. So I have declared a new variable as a web element. I'm gonna point or bind that variable onto that portion of the page. So we'll step into this. And it looks like it didn't find it. No such. Looks like I went too far. So it looks like that part happened OK. Oh, yeah, because we can see it plugged Colonial Heritage Festival into here. I must have hit F5 instead of F8. I tried to run more than I meant it to run. OK. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and have it. Um, actually pull that value in. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and stop my code here. And I'm going to make this work by actually passing a row number to it. So I'll make another sub procedure here called my Acme sub runner. My trucking search is going to expect a row to be sent to it. So row as a long integer. I'll call this by sending row two to it. That way I can just pull this in without having to write the loop to kind of loop through and do all of these. So instead of sending Colonial Heritage Festival into this, it's like this is called sheet one. I think we'll just refer to it that way and kind of view my Project Explorer. Yeah, so the name of that sheet is Sheet 1. I'm not thrilled with that name, but let's go ahead and use it. So instead of sending keys that, we're going to send it Sheet 1, cells, row number, row, and the column of that is column E. That will refer to that cell, and we want the value of that.
then after that, we're gonna to try to click on the button. So let's find that button, inspect it. And it looks like it has a name of submit. Kind of like doing this in two steps. By the time I sent the keys to this, I don't need LM bound onto that anymore. So let me go ahead and copy this line. This is called submit. It's probably case sensitive. So I'm gonna to check to make sure that name does have a capital S on it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and Make sure I match the case. And then I'm gonna click on that as a separate process. So lm.click. All right, let me go ahead and step into this. I'll come up to my runner and use F8. come through this. That should open up the window. That should navigate there. That should put in the number. And that should click on the search button. All right. So now, we've got then to this page. So now we wanna, let's, why don't, for this example, why don't we just assume that since we are doing this search by the US Department of Transportation number, it's going to be the first one. There are other ways that we could search. And so it could come back with multiple names, but let's just go ahead and find this first link then that we have here on this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect that. And let's see how we might be able to find this one. So I'm looking at this, it's a hypertext link. I don't really see anything that looks really helpful about that tag itself, but it's in a, it's in a cell tag. So this is a table defined here. Tables are made up of rows. The rows then have this TD tag in it, which stands for table data. And so this has a class of that right there. Let me go ahead and see if I can use that to search for it. I'm gonna copy that. Then after we've clicked that button, come to the search page, let's set alum equal to, and then we'll find by class. And we'll search for that, that it's looking, that has that particular class. Now there's gonna be multiple ones that have that same class, but that should just assign it to the first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and run up to that position. See, I'm already there. So let me just drag up and we'll run that line there and see if it runs okay. Curious to see what we've got in that element. So let me just come to my immediate window and I'm gonna look at my ELEM dot and then there's this attribute property of the element. And I can tell it the attribute I'm interested in and that's gonna be the inner HTML. That should be all of the HTML that's inside this tag.
And so that, what I'm seeing here is what's inside of the HTML tag, the first tag that had this, this is the class and it looks pretty good. Kind of scroll over and see what's there. Yeah, so that's the that's the A tag that's got these this Duke Brothers in it. So here I'm ready to click on that. So I should just be able to do an LM dot click on that as well. And that should follow that link. So now it's brought us to the page that has the information just for that particular one. This looks pretty good. So now we want to find this one that has this telephone here. So let me go ahead and kind of look at this one and see what there might be about it. So it looks like I've got, this is gonna be a little more difficult to track down because it's a particular tag. I can find it. I can get a collection of all of the TD tags, but this doesn't have a name or anything built onto it. The one I'm actually looking for is here. It doesn't have anything that looks like it might be helpful to find it on. So let's just go ahead and pull all of the ones that have this particular class this middle TDFMCA class. And so to do this, instead of, instead of using this element, I'm gonna, there's actually another object that is the, it's like a collection of elements. So let me declare a new one of those. I'm just gonna call it E-L-E-M-S as web elements. So this will be a collection of multiple elements. So I don't have any reason to think that that's gonna be the very first one. If it's the first one, I could just say, go get the first tag that has that class. But this can take a little more work. So I'm gonna get all of the tags that have that class. And then once I have those in a collection, I'll look through them to see if I can find the one that I'm after. So we've clicked that. Now I'm going to set ELEMS equal to bot dot find. Now we see it here's find element by class. These are alphabetical. There's lots of ways to find an element. If I scroll down here, I'm going to get to a similar set of them. Let's find elements, plural. So the difference is my find element by class is going to send back a reference to the first tag that matches that class. Find elements will give me back a collection of all of them. So find elements by class, and I will plug in that class name. And that then should give me a collection. Let me just go ahead and run that. And let me just count how many elements we have in there. So there are six elements that had that particular class on it. You just kind of kind of poke around at these for just a minute. So elements dot items or dot item number one dot attribute in our HTML. I'll do the outer HTML. We'll get everything that's inside the tag, but it'll also have the tag itself. And so the first one that it found has, says US Department of Transportation number. Let me see if I can make sense of that. US Department of Transportation number. Okay, so what's the second one? 
collections start counting at one, if I try to refer to zero, I think it's gonna give me an error. Yeah. So if we look at the second one, that's the address. If we look at the third one, that's the telephone number. And so if I was kind of sure about the structure of this page, I could just kind of go directly to the third one, or I could set up a loop that kind of looks through all of these until I find the one that has what I'm after. And the truth is, if I find one that's got that string in it, then that's gonna be, I'm pretty sure I've got the right one that I'm interested in. So let me copy that. And let's just come back and use that to kind of loop across and find the one that we're after. For each alum in alums. Debug.print alum dot oops alum dot attribute outer HTML. So I will step through this. There's US Department of Transportation number, address, telephone. Okay, so that's going through all of them. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to check to see, instead of printing it out, let me say if in string, starting at zero, oops, starting at first character, looking at that outer HTML and then looking for that tag that I expect to be in there if I found the right one. So I'll run that and it's, it's looped through that several times until it found the one that had telephone in it. So now the LM that I have, what's bound to LM is the one that I'm after. So let me do LM.attribute outer HTML. So that's got me then the one I'm after. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to want to use that parser. Could I work with this like kind of directly using the tools that we have with Selenium to track it down? Yes, but I want to teach you this parser because sometimes you've got kind of larger blocks of text that the tools with Selenium will kind of get you down to that block of text, but you know, won't be very easy to kind of pull stuff out of that particular block of text. So let me go ahead and come here back up to the top and dim P as a new parser. Then once I've found the segment that I'm after, let me say that set P, sorry, it is parser. So p.text equals the outer HTML of the element. Let me make sure I've set the position of P to begin looking at the first. And then as I'm looking at this little block of text, right, so now this is the text that I've got in that parser. What can I look for that will get me, you know, just to the right place to pull in this data? 
And I'm betting that this width of 98 is gonna be constant. So I'm gonna copy that. And that's what I'm gonna to move to. So P dot move to. Now we've got quotes inside of quotes here. I'm gonna get rid of that first one. I don't think I need it. But this one I do need. So I'm gonna put double quotes. So I'm gonna put two double quotes, of course. That lets me put a double quote inside of a double quote terminated string. And that will move my position indicator to right there inside of this object. And then I just wanna pull everything up until this non-breaking space. So this is an HTML. Um, it's not quite a tag, what do we call it? It's, it's an encoded space. Uh, and so I wanna get the text right up to there. I'm after the phone number, let me declare a variable for the phone number. Or actually, let me just write it directly out to the sheet. So I've moved to that location. Oops, I don't need parentheses around the argument list. Uh, and I will now say sheet one dot cells, row number, row, column number. Is it column F? Yep, column F has the phone. Dot value is equal to p dot get text, and we're getting the text from wherever the current position is up to where it says non-breaking space. Ampersand nbsp semicolon. Thank you. Okay, so I'm inside this if statement and we will function. I stepped into it, I wanted to step over it. Ah, debug, step out. Function shift F8. Uh, it's not gonna let me do it on this keyboard. So debug, step over. Debug, step over. And this then should plug that value into that worksheet. Debug, step over. So we've read that phone number then off hold it off of the HTML and dropped it here into the cell. Okay, so just right as we finished up class, I expressed that I was a little worried that when we clicked on this button here on the submit button that it wasn't actually going to wait until the page had um, kind of fully arrived before it moved on. I got back to my office and checked on it, and it really is waiting, so I don't really need to introduce any more information there, but right after class, a couple of students said they were having a little trouble here, so let me go ahead and run this code up to this position. Okay, so we've, we've plugged in the Department of Transportation number. We're gonna wait now, so let me go ahead and navigate through this clicking that button. Now, right here is something that's a little bit interesting, so let's take a look. So this is going to look at this page, and it's going to find the first element that has a class of TD, middle TDFMSCA. And so let's go ahead and execute that line and then take a look at what that element is. So this element is a table data tag. It's that whole cell in this table here. 
And if I were to go ahead and click on this, it would actually click that cell. When I say lm.click, it's clicking this right here. And it's clicking that table data, and it's working just fine for me. But we had a couple of students afterwards who were saying that's just not actually clicking it. And as I looked at the code after class, I thought, oh, wow, yeah, we, we should be clicking this one. We shouldn't be clicking the table data. We should be clicking the, the anchor tag. That's the actual link. Right? This is the one that has the URL that we're trying to go to and shows like, the text that we're trying to find. Right? That's the link. That's the tag that renders that link. So here's what I'm going to do is that I am going to um, set LM equal to something else. So LM is going to be the, that's going to find this tag here. But now I want to look in that tag and find the first anchor tag that's there. So instead of saying it's equal to bot, I'm going to look at LM, find element not by class, but by tag. And I'm looking for the anchor tag. So this is going to find the TD, the first one that has this particular class, and then we're going to immediately set it to the first one to within that element. We're going to find the first element that has the anchor tag. And so now when we run that, and we look at this, it should bring back just the anchor tag. And so now we'll tell that to click, and that should click fine. Again, for me, it was working. On a couple of computers, I tried it just fine, but this is the way that it makes more sense, and that's what it took to get those other students' code working. So let's just go ahead and stop this, and we've got our data cleared out of here. So let's just go ahead and bring this over here to where we can see it. And I'll run this code again. We just want to make sure that we can see it running um, all the way through. older version of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run our code. And we want to see it kind of run through without stopping. Make sure we got the stop taken out. Don't think I have any more stops in here. So this should just pop open the browser, do everything we told it to do, and then drop the phone number in there. Let's give it a shot. Open the browser. Yeah, you can see it's pulled that in. So we're in good shape. All right, that's the full example.